all know Canada's grappling with a housing shortage. For the last 20 years, our supply hasn't kept up with demand, especially in our six biggest cities. Welcome everyone, Joelle Hamilton here, and I'm thrilled to have you on the podcast with us today. We're tackling a topic that's on a lot of people's minds, Canada's housing supply. Here with me today is Aled Ab Yorworth, Deputy Chief Economist at CMHC. And together, we're going to dive into the latest insights of our spring 2024 housing supply report. Thank you for joining me, Aled. Thank you. Uh, my first question focuses specifically on housing construction data. What was the state of housing data in 2023? Well, we actually ended up with quite a lot of housing supply. A lot, a lot of uh, housing was built. Overall, it was a record uh, or close to a record. But, but there's sort of a little bit of worrying signs uh, under the surface. So it seems that some types of housing, particularly single detached, started reacting to higher interest rates. That was a little bit offset by uh, more construction of apartment buildings. And uh, so overall, that saved the day a little bit. And so we had fairly strong uh, housing starts in Toronto, Vancouver and Calgary. Toronto and Vancouver apartment starts held up um, quite strongly. Calgary, uh, the economy seems to be booming in Alberta. And so uh, housing starts held up. Uh, it was a little bit of a different story in other big Canadian cities, Ottawa, Montreal, Edmonton. Things were a little bit cooler in, in those cities, particularly in uh, in Montreal. And so overall, it was it was a fairly good picture. But I, I think we're still a little bit worried that uh, not enough housing is being built. And even though, yes, this was quite a lot of housing, we need a lot more and we need to fill that supply gap that we have um, in order to get back to affordability. So you mentioned a surge in purpose-built rental construction and also a decline in um, single detached or ground-oriented homes. Can you expand on what's behind these trends? Well, our hypothesis is that uh, we, we've had a lagged response to interest rates. Uh, so obviously the Bank of Canada raised interest rates in order to combat inflation. And some parts of the housing system react faster than other parts. So single detached housing, um, they react very quickly to a higher interest rate, demand goes away. It becomes more expensive to get financing very quickly because these are built fairly rapidly. And so you had that quick response to higher interest rates. What's a little bit different with apartment buildings is that it's a long process. They need to get the f financing together over maybe a couple of years in order to get uh, start construction and then construction itself takes two years. So our hypothesis is that uh, apartments, they got their financing in line before the interest rates went up. And so you're seeing a lagged effect. And so construction went ahead fairly uh, well, in, in uh, last year, in 2023, a lot of rental was built, which was a very good thing because we have a desperate need for rental. Um, but, you know, we have concerns now that that lagged effect of higher interest rates may impact um, apartment construction this year. And I read in the report that Montreal saw a 37% drop in housing starts last year. Can you explain this 20 year like record low? Like what happened? Well, it, we believe it's part of this continuing story that uh, smaller structures, the construction of them, react more quickly, faster to higher interest rates. In general, the structures in Montreal are smaller. You don't have so many of the very high-rise apartment buildings. You have maybe more three-, four-story structures, row housing and so forth. Uh, with more of that sort of housing in general, uh, then the, the housing system responds faster to interest rates. And so, whereas in Toronto and Vancouver, you have a slow reaction to higher interest rates because they build these apartments. In Montreal, you have a faster reaction because they're in, um, they, they build smaller structures. Our, our hope is that if the Bank of Canada overcomes uh, inflation and interest rates come back down, then we can see a rebound um, in construction this year and next. And my next question is about the increase in the average construction time for projects. Um, in our report, uh, we say that it reached 10 months for a single detached home in 2023 and over 22 months for apartments, uh, for apartment projects. What's driving that rise? 
Well, we don't have precise deta- data on that, but, but our, our, you know, what we are hearing is that it's difficult to get construction workers. Um, there's, there have been some supply chain challenges. Um, all of these things are, are contributing to um, more challenging conditions for builders. Uh, so stuff is taking more time in, in order to get built. Um, this is, again, a concern because obviously we need to increase housing supply. We need to get much more housing for like each worker. We need to improve productivity in the industry. So to see these uh, these effects of uh, lagging of time it takes to build, uh, this is a bit concerning. And so obviously we need to uh, think about uh, getting more construction workers, getting more technology, improving productivity. There's a lot of challenges uh, in the industry at the moment. So last month, your colleague, Kevin Hughes, who's also a deputy chief economist here at CMHC, um, he published a thought leadership article that discusses the impact of retiring baby boomers and the lack of specialized labor. What impact is that going to have on construction productivity? Um, it, it's a major concern because you know, the numbers are not precise, but we have something like a quarter of the labor force retiring within 10 years in construction. So um, we already have a shortage of housing supply. We need to produce more. There's a lot of uh, workers retiring. Um, there's a lot of specialized skill in, in, in the industry. So this is going to make uh, increasing housing supply a major challenge. And it's almost unavoidable that we're going to have to develop some new techniques of construction, maybe more automation, somehow getting all of this AI and digitization to help uh, to improve productivity in construction. It's, um, I mean, this retiring of, of the baby boomers is inevitable. And so we're going to have to develop some new methods in order to increase housing supply. Well, that's a wrap on our podcast today, uh, Aled. Thank you so much for joining me and for providing us with uh, great insights on the 2024 uh, Housing Supply Report. And thank you to our listeners today. We hope this discussion helped you get a deeper understanding of the current state of housing supply in Canada and the challenging factors that are at play. Stay tuned for more conversations that matter here on our podcast. Until next time.